Hello everyone. So finally, finally we have access to more support that we can use in Dragonity. And uh, this new support comes in, in the form of Ringo Worm and this pattern. So this is a huge deal for Dragonity because for the longest time we were playing from behind. Like uh, our decklist was really outdated uh, for what uh, the current meta was and the current like power creep of the game. But finally we're starting to catch up little by little. So what do these two cards add up to the deck and how does this change the combo? So I'm going to try to answer these questions in this video. So we're going to start with the decklist itself. So as you can see, uh, the decklist is pretty much the same, uh, except now we have Ringo Worm and we have access to a second Tempest if we wish to use it. In this list, I'm using two just to test things out, but most likely uh, I'm just going to end up cutting one Tempest and playing two Lubellian. Uh, this seems like the correct uh, ratios, but for now I'm just going to try test two Tempest and see if it's worth playing. You also notice that in this list uh, there is no Koos because we don't need Koos anymore uh, because it doesn't serve a purpose anymore because we don't end up uh, end up using Arid Bear as part of the combo anymore. We just keep it in the extra deck if we ever choose to go into it uh, as an option. Basically, it's not mandatory to go into it. Although you can still go into it uh, in the combo if you are uh, are not able to go into your quick synchro play if you wish. So yeah. So in this list, we play one Ringu Worm. Uh, this card is very versatile. And uh, you notice that I am only on one Baby Rock this time, because for those who know me, you know that I like playing two Baby Rock. But now I don't need to play the second Baby Rock anymore because I have access to Ringu Worm, which does the same job as the second Baby Rock, but way better, way, way better. Now, how is that? Well, if you remember in my other guide, I said that I used to play the second Baby Rock because it allowed me to access a second Synchro Monster as part of my end board, right? During the Crystal Wing combo line. So if I go into the early, early Crystal Wing line, if I use a second Baby Rock, I can access another Synchro Monster at the end of the combo. Well, with Ringo Worm, I can do that anytime during any combo, not just the Crystal Wing combo, like I can do it anytime and much easier as well. Okay, because Ringo Worm is a dragon and dragons are very easily accessible in Dragonity because we have so many ways to search it or summon it, right? And also it's a level two tuner as well. So it, it fits right in the deck from the get-go. Like uh, this card is crazy in Dragonity, like we we, uh, we can use it uh, in a flexible way. We can use it in the standard combo that I will show in a little bit. But also we can, it's very flexible because we can access it anytime we need to because it's a dragon. Unlike Baby Rock, which is a wing beast. So our only option to access it was either to hard draw it or to basically search it with the uh, guide orc, right? So yeah, Ringo Worm is much easier to access. Uh, which makes the combo lines more flexible. Also, uh, Ringo Worm on its own is basically two tuners in one card because it itself is a level two tuner. And also its effect allows it to special summon a token, a level two token that can also be used as a tuner if you're gonna synchro summon with it. So, which is really, really good. Um, uh, however, uh, don't sleep on the first effect of this card. Even though we only play one copy, and I think one copy is enough, you can play two if you want. Uh, three is too much. Like you, you will never use the third copy, even in a grind, in, even in a grind state. Like either one or two is fine. Uh, and don't sleep on the first effect because even if you draw this card, you can special summon it if there is a non-effect monster on the field. And if you get gamed, for example, like maybe you play Gaiderg, you use the effect, and you get gamed on Gaiderg. Now there is a driver on the field, which allows you to special summon this card from your hand. And if you have another extender in hand, you can simply continue comboing, right? So keep that in mind. Like even though non-effect monsters are not widely used, if you get Gamma, which uh, and Gamma is now popular because of Maxi and because of Kashtira, uh, you can summon this card from your hand if the occasion presents itself. So it's just keep that in mind. So yeah, so this card is crazy in Dragonity and it's very flexible. 
So besides that, like like I said in the deck list, uh, it did not change a lot. Uh, this is just the deck list I'm testing right now. Uh, I I probably like if if I test this and I find it a little bit bricky, I might go up uh, the number of cards and go for like forty five ish or forty seven cards. It depends. I might even add some tech cards like the talents and thrust package or whatnot, but. We will see. For now, I'm just going to test this uh, list, which seems to work just fine. For the extra deck, so for the extra deck, you notice something uh, uh, changed. For one, uh, we're playing the quick synchro stuff in the standard version, uh, which is usually not the way you we used to play Dragonity. But in this particular variant, since we have access to Dispatter and Ringworm, it's actually the preferred way to play Dragonity nowadays. Uh, besides the other variant that I will mention, which is the King Calamity variant, which I'm not a fan of, because I'm, you know me, I'm not really fan a fan of floodgates or turn skips. But uh, yeah, you can play the community with uh, King Calamity. I might do a, vid a separate video on it like uh, next time. But for this video, I'm just gonna focus on the very standard combo of the new Dragonity. Okay, no floodgates, no turn skip, nothing, just pure skill. <laughs> so yeah, so the Exo deck has the Quick Synchro package in Stardust Dragon and Axel Synchro Stardust Dragon. And uh, as a target for this Quick Synchro play, we have Satellite Warrior and Baron de Fleur. Now, usually with this package, you're going into Baron de Fleur 99% of the time. Okay, this is the safest option. Basically, you just Quick Synchro on uh, during the opponent's turn uh, main phase. Uh, to Baron. However, sometimes in niche cases, you can go into Satellite Warrior instead. Depends on the deck. For example, if you're playing against a back row heavy deck, you can go into Satellite, satellite Warrior and just basically wipe the, the back row and wipe the field. And this this card can get huge depending on how many Synchro Monsters you have in your, in your graveyard, right? So uh, you, you can get easily to like 6k plus with this card which can help like get over some big monsters depending on which deck you face okay so uh, yeah but usually you're you're going into a baron of course we still have like the guider the lewin for the combo the double atom the seals the romulus we still have crystal wing and savage and of course the new addition to the deck uh, this pattern so this pattern is really good in this deck because it's a level 10 synchro, which is easy to access. And it's also a dragon, which is even easier to access in Dragonity. And its effect is very synergistic uh, with other cards in our deck, like the Bestial, the Red MD, the Ringo Worm. Like we have many targets that we can summon off the Banish Zone uh, with this card. And uh, we can either uh, summon back like extenders, follow up, or even combo extenders. Uh, and uh, tuners to go into synchro summons, etc. Right, so this is very versatile card, and it's also a bestial, so you can actually uh, summon it back from the graveyard with a card like regained, and you can tribute it, and it it counts as a bestial for like uh, branded beast, so you don't need to summon a, a bestial from your hand to make beast live, because you can s simply have this pattern on the field already and beast is already live, right? So there is that as well. Uh, the interruption in this card is very interesting because depending on how you choose to resolve this effect, you either you either destroy the monster that you're trying to interrupt or you negate the monster that you're trying to interrupt. Now, the way you know this is if you return one of your own banished card to your deck, then you destroy. If you return an opponent card to their deck, then you negate. This card does not do both. It does not destroy and negate at the same time. It either destroys or it negates depending on which side of the banished uh, cards you return to the deck. If you, banish, if you return your own card, you, you destroy. If you return your opponent's card, you negate. Okay? So, yeah. Uh, now, we're just going to hop into, uh, like... Not a replay, but I'm just going to go into solo mode and showcase the full combo, which is this very standard Remus plus two discard combo, which can will get you access to the maximum amount of resources without normal summoning. So let's hop onto solo mode.
but before we start if you enjoy the content please make sure to leave a like subscribe and click on the bell button to get notified whenever i upload a new video i really appreciate it so now back to the combo so uh, this hand is really good uh, i'm just gonna ignore every other card except remus so i'm gonna showcase the uh, remus plus two discard combo uh, however as a disclaimer you don't really need the second discard except when you want both beast and regained to be on the field by the end of the combo okay you can do the full combo with only one discard okay but in that case you uh, you only have uh, one option between both regained and, and uh, beast which usually if you only have one option you would choose regained every time okay it's especially now that we have this pattern because this pattern is a bestial so we can revive it with regained as well okay so except in this in this uh, example i'm just going to showcase remis plus two discard just to get greedy with it uh, but just keep in mind that the second discard is only there to access the second branded uh, spell or uh, the uh, the branded regained basically alongside beast so let's start by activating remus again ignore everything in my hand i'm just gonna go like as as if the other uh, cards are irrelevant i'm gonna activate ravine to add legatus here i'm just gonna discard the tempest and add back legatus now i'm gonna special summon legatus then special summon the Remus and go into Guiderk. Very standard stuff. The start of the combo is the same as in the old combo. So this should be familiar to everyone uh, who have been watching my content. So now we're going to access Zephyros. And we're going to activate Zephyros to bounce back the Ravine. And this part of the combo is important because bouncing back the ravine allows us to uh, access the second branded card basically because we can use the ravine to dump the rebellion which frees up the uh, saronir to dump the regained to the uh, to the graveyard okay so now with zephyros and uh, gaiderk are gonna be linked into romulus which is gonna get us the glow So here we can either like uh, activate Ravine now, discard the uh, missile thing, and then get it back with Glow, or we can just wait on the uh, on the uh, Ravine because I have another card that I can afford to discard. I'm just gonna wait, but another uh, another times we, you can just do this, activate Ravine now. But this is too early for that. But just in case, you can activate Ravine now, discard the missile th the missile thing dump the rebellion now because you already know that you're gonna dump the regained with serenir and now you can activate glow to get back the missile type but i could have activated glow anyway earlier because i play armagram but not everyone plays Ag armagram it's just a card that i like playing so at this point after we activated glow and got back the missile tain we're just gonna special summon the missile tain by sending the romulus activate missile tain to equip the uh, guide dirk very standard stuff so far activate the glow to special summon guide dirk a second time on the field activate guide dirk again and now we're gonna search phalanx so everything is standard we already like access our tuner in this way before now we're gonna go into our first atom and this is where things are gonna start to change just a little bit so if you remember in the uh, standard combo before, here we activate uh, Atom to search the uh, Samsara Dragon. And the way we do that is that we special summon the Samsara Dragon directly from the deck. However, we don't do this. Uh, we don't do that here because we have access to Ringu War. So now we're still going to access uh, Samsara Dragon, but with a different way. We're going to special summon the Red MD. And we're gonna use Red MD to special summon back the Gaiderk. And now we're gonna access the Samsara Dragon. 
Now, why do we do it this way? Why do we not just simply special summon the Samsara directly from the deck like we did before? Well, because we're going to use this second Atom to special summon the Ringu Worm directly from the deck. Uh, now, here's the thing to, to remember. The first Atom always has the role to get us access to Samsara Dragon. Okay, so the role is the same. It's just the way we did it is a little bit different. And before in the old combo, this this part usually you see it with the second atom. So the second atom usually special summons the red MD and then the guide dog. Why is that? Because the guide dog at that point would get access to baby rock because we would need the baby rock to be on the field to go into savage, right? However, that's not necessary anymore because we have Ringo War. So instead of that, we can move this whole sequence with Atom to the first Atom and that frees up the second Atom to just special summon the Ringu Worm directly from the deck. And that's the benefit of Ringu Worm being a dragon. That's why it's, Ringu Worm is very important in this deck. Okay, It's very flexible and it's very accessible. So at this point, now that we have both phal Phalanx and uh, Samsara Dragon in the graveyard, we can just go into seals and continue our combo. Now we can activate Samsara Dragon, target the Mistletane and get back the Mistletane to our hand and tribute it over the seal and target the Phalanx. So now with, with seal, you know what to do, you special summon Seifert. So here, one thing uh, worth noting is that sometimes you start uh, you start the game with Seifert in your hand, okay? Uh, that's okay, because in that case, you can just discard the Seifert with Ravine. And at this point of the combo, where you usually summon Seifert from the deck, you simply summon Saronir directly from the deck. It's that simple. And this will allow you to skip going into Lewin because the, the whole point of Lewin is to transform this level 4 uh, monster into a level 6. It's that simple. So now, because we summoned the Safer, we need to access our Bestial Engine. So we're just gonna send the uh, Missile Tain to the graveyard to get access to our Bestial Serenir. And now we need this, this monster here to go into a level 6 and the way we do that is through Lewin. So that's the whole point of Lewin, is to transform Seifert into a level 6 uh, monster. Of course, we activate Lewin here to get back the Phalanx. So all we did here is just, as you can see, we went from Seifert plus Phalanx to Lewin plus Phalanx. That's all we did. However, if we start with Seifert in our hand and we discard it with Ravine, we can simply directly uh, special summon the Saronir directly from the deck. So in this case, so we're just gonna summon Saronir here. So the end board here would be the same, except instead of Fluin, we would have Mistletoe. That's that's pretty much the only difference. But the the board would be the same: Saronir plus Gaiderg plus Phalanx plus a level six uh, monster. It could be Luin or Mistletoe. That's it. So don't uh, like don't get confused if you draw safer and you don't know what to do with it. Sometimes because people sometimes just keep the safer in, in their hand so that they can summon it off of seal from the hand when it's not necessary, right? So keep that in mind. So uh, now we just go into the second atom. Now that we have Saronir and Lewin, I should have put this atom in defense. I'll explain why in a second. So now we activate the, the effect of second atom by detaching Saronir specifically. And we're going to summon Ringu Worm directly from the deck. We're going to activate Saronir. And this Saronir is going to dump Regained. Because remember, we already dumped the Lubalian with Ravine earlier. Okay? So now, what we're going to do is activate Seifert. To get back the Lubellion in hand. And we're going to activate Lubellion to get Magnamot. 
And now there is an important part of the combo that you need to pay attention to. So now we're going to activate Magna Mode. And here it's very important that you target and banish Saronir specifically. I will explain why in a little bit. We're going to summon Magna Mode, use its effect, and now we're going to special summon the Lubalian. And we're going to use Lubalian to place the only valid target that is in the deck, which is Beast. And now we're going to go into this pattern. We're going to use any of the tuners, doesn't matter who. And we're going to go into this pattern. And we're going to use the other tuner and guider to go into Axel Synchro. We're going to activate Axel Synchro to get back any tuner, doesn't matter which one. And at this point, we're going to activate this pattern's effect to special summon the Saronir that we banished earlier. And this is why it's important to banish Saronir, because we need, we need the level 6 monster so that we can Synchro with the other tuner into Borrowed Savage Dragon. That's why we uh, banish Saronir specifically. We need the level. And since it happens to be a dark monster, it can be summoned off of this pattern. Now we finish the combo with activating the effect of Ringo Worm in the graveyard to special summon the token. And this is the uh, end board. Of course, uh, the end board will be complete at the end phase once we place regained on the field with the uh, effect of beast and we draw the uh, we add the uh, draw swarm in hand with the effect of magna mode okay so now the end end board uh le let's finish the uh, let's finish the uh, the turn and i will show you the end board in its totality and magna mode will search draw swarm so okay i'm just gonna wait for the phases here okay so as you can see this is the end board uh, and this is why i said uh, atom should be in defense because uh, usually if you don't have any more extenders like in hand or in graveyard you will end up with both beast and regained this pattern access synchro with the token and savage with a Tom, which should be in defense. However, sometimes, like the hand that I had here, I had an extra extender in uh, Tempest, right? So what I could have done is just summon Tempest, and then with Tempest and a Tom, go into the second, uh, the second seal. So that was an option, right? Or, if I didn't have an extender in Graveyard, but I had a dragon in my hand that I could normal summon, maybe like another Phalanx or a, another Remus or something, I could have done that as well, like normal summon the Phalanx or the Remus, and then link off both uh, it and Atom into the second seal. So there is options there. If you have more extension, you can just use that Atom into to go into seal. Okay, but usually if if you don't have access to another extension, this is the end board, and this is how it looks like with Remus plus two discards. The end board would look exactly the same minus the beast if we only did the combo with only one discard. Remember, the second discard is just there to allow us to dump the regained uh, with Saronir and uh, dump the Rebellion with Rabine. Okay? That's it. So, that's the full board. If we had access to, like, uh, I don't know, like a card that we would search with Gaidor usually at the opening hand, uh, what we could have done as well is that end up on Crystal Wing very early on in the combo as well. So we would have the same board plus Crystal Wing as well. Okay, but usually the Crystal Wing lines uh, will also prevent you from having both cards on the field unless you start like with uh, like with uh, Lubellian in hand or like Regained in hand that you can discard with Ravine anyway, right? But usually, if you go into a Crystal Wing, you're also gonna uh, end with only one of these two cards. Okay? So yeah, so that's the combo. 
and here as you see uh, it's the uh, end of the main phase so this is an example of remember when i talked earlier about how you usually quick synchro into uh, background floor here is an example where let's imagine this is like labyrinth for example right so what you can do is just quick synchro so at the end of the main phase you use your access synchro to quick synchro into satellite warrior so we're just gonna quick synchro into satellite warrior and what this and the satellite warrior is gonna pop all those cards because if you see we have one two three so we have three synchros in our graveyard which means we can pop all three cards on the field so we're gonna pop this one select another card yes select another card yes and now we just popped everything so if this was labyrinth we would pop like three cards no problem and this is the power of satellite warrior basically it's really good against back row decks so uh yeah even if they put another card on the field i can just use like this and tribute atom for example and just destroy it as well so it's a lot of disruption right and this attack boost is uh, permanent by the way as long as this card is on the field and face up it's gonna keep that attack boost so that's the whole uh, end board and the and some of the interaction at least and uh, yeah it's actually nice that the bot decided to put three like <laughs> three back row because i i wanted to showcase the satellite warrior thing so yeah so this would be an, a Baron de Fleur usually, but uh, yeah, in this case, against Dark Road Deck, Satellite Warrior just does the job. So yeah, that's the full combo. I think I talked about everything that needed to be talked about. Uh, if you have any more questions about it, feel free to um, ask it in the comment section. Next video, maybe, if I feel like it, I will do the, I will do the uh, King Calamity version. I, I'm sure that some of you want to play it as well, so... I'll try to do it, uh, and uh, yeah, so that's the end of it, please consider subscribing, uh, it really helps me a lot, like I want to reach like at least 1000 and make the channel uh, monetized as soon as possible, so I can only do that with your help, so I would appreciate it if you could subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and I'll see you guys in the next uh, video, peace!